Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs, and I want to thank you for joining me today, as today we are basically going to go over what it's been like to drive the 2001 Pontiac Aztec GT for the first 5,000 miles since the car has been not only rebuilt, but just with me in general. Um, however, we're not really at the 5,000 mile mark yet. We are slightly under the 5,000 mile mark, but I don't know when I'm going to be able to film this video. So figured today would be the best day to do it. The weather is nice. It's cool outside, but life is kind of returning back to normal um, in, in a few ways. I'm back to work already and tomorrow I actually start school again. So it's going to be kind of crazy as far as the scheduling goes for vlogging and whatnot all over again and uh, I figured I might as well just take the opportunity and go over basically everything that we've had to deal with uh, with the Aztec so far and the last 5,000 miles since it has been on the road. Now it is kind of breezy today so I do apologize for any wind noise that my phone may pick up and uh, you guys know how it goes. So let's get started. So if you've not been following the channel uh, over the last almost what two years or so um, this, this was my project car. This was my baby. Uh, my 2001 Pontiac Aztec GT bought it for $400 in January of 2018 and, uh, slowly have been trying to bring it back to life. And it sat in the driveway, uh, for a very long time, well over a year, like a year and a half. Um, and then just this past September, September of 2019, we finally got it to the point where it was roadworthy. And I have been driving it just about every day ever since, uh, give or take. And my original plan to have this car really wasn't to drive it as often as I do. I honestly just wanted to have it as kind of like a collector's item in a sense because these are getting harder to find and not too many people care for them obviously but i love them this is the second one that i've had my first one being a 2003 uh, which was obviously in way better shape um, because it was newer at the time when i had it and whatnot However, after four years of ownership with that, I traded it in because the transmission was starting to bum out on it. And at the time, it just seemed a little more feasible to buy another car rather than dump money into the transmission. Now, had I known that I would have wanted another one, obviously, I probably would have just changed my mind. But that decision obviously led me to other car purchases that I do not regret at all. So my decision to buy another Aztec really wasn't, I, was, I really wasn't looking for one in as rough a shape as this one has been. I wanted to buy one that was newer, honestly. I wanted to buy maybe one of the later years of, of the Aztec and one that was already ready to be driven, one that had already had head gaskets replaced, intake gaskets, um, any of those repairs. I really wasn't looking to do any of that stuff myself. But when I came across um, this particular Aztec uh, on a Facebook Marketplace post, uh, it was a little over an hour away, and they were originally asking $700 for it. Um, but I really didn't want to look into buying one that needed as much work as this one did. Um, this one needed the intake and head gaskets replaced on it. It was not drivable at all, and uh, I wasn't interested. But a few months later, they knocked the price down to $400, and I gave it some some thought, and I contacted the previous owners, and from there, I went and looked at it. Um, this one has a lot of options that my first Aztec didn't have, so for it being an 01, it being a GT, it having the amenities that this one has, and cosmetically, it really wasn't all that bad either. I decided, why not? We'll, we'll pay the $400 for it. And this will be my first hands-on project car where I get to tear the motor apart and just fix everything myself. Um, stuff that I have never done before. And I decided to, I decided to just stick with it from there. But like I said, I really wasn't planning on driving this thing as often as I do. It was supposed to just be a collector's item, but I decided once that I enrolled in school, 
Uh, I didn't want to put all of the mileage on my fusion going to school and to work. My school is like, you know, about 45 minutes away. It's highway mileage, um, which isn't that bad, but you know, the mileage adds up and my fusion is still in good standing mileage wise. So I really didn't want to do that. So I take the fusion to school and I've been trying to use the Aztec for everywhere else locally. So yeah, um, it's definitely been driven a lot more than I originally planned on it, but I can honestly say it really hasn't been all that bad. It's been, it's been holding up fairly well, uh, I'd like to say. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get this one washed in time for the video, and I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, um, about a month ago, I actually took the time to polish the paint. Um, you know, we washed it, we polished it, we waxed it. It's the first time this thing's probably had a coat of wax on it, and God knows how long, because this thing was extremely disgusting as far as the paint and stuff when I bought the car. It had not been touched in a long time. I think, if I remember correctly, it sat for almost two years with the previous owner when they had the overheating issue and the head gaskets blew out of it. And um, yeah, it sat in their yard for a while and just, you know, it had green stuff collecting on, you know, around the headlights and it was just bad. So <laughs> um, I took the opportunity um, when I was off of work and um, decided to give this thing a full detail for the first time since I've had it. Um, I've actually got some res remnants of like the polish and the wax that has stuck to all the plastic pieces. And I honestly don't know if that's ever going to come off maybe in time with the next few washes that I give it. Um, but, you know, it's it's kind of upsetting, but there's nothing I can do about it. I didn't realize that the stuff that I was using was going to collect in this plastic here, but maybe in time, like I said, it'll, it'll be better again. And obviously the wheels have the brake dust because these front wheels generate brake dust horribly. Um, these are still the brakes that were on the car when I bought it. The pads really aren't that bad. Um, there's still a pretty good amount of pads on there. Uh, the rotors, however, are, I don't like the rotors on here. They're warping and eventually we will get to that i just haven't changed them yet because uh the, you know like i said the pads are still pretty decent i was just going to try to ride them out um you know as, as best as i can back brakes also need done too we have not done anything with the drum brakes yet but um those pads they're still decent and i know that the, they don't get used as much as the front brakes but uh just the condition of them um eventually we are going to have to get to those also so maybe um i don't know when i do the front brakes we might do the back brakes also and then that way all four brakes are going to be um at 100 percent. and i know everybody always comments about the body cladding obviously uh, the sides are fading it was faded when i bought the car this door and this piece of cladding is slightly different because the dealership that i worked at the guy who does all the touch-up painting and stuff applied a special kind of clear coat to this that brought back the original color, which is this, and it actually held up for a while, but I can, you know, as, as the months have been moving on, we can tell that it is starting to fade again. So this is, you know, obviously something that has to be kept up with, and um, I've got a couple of other things that I want to try for, and I just have not done it yet, and... Um, Maybe this summer I will. Um, you know, honestly, I've just kind of grown to live with it for the time being. Uh, I'm more interested mechanically in getting the rest of the car right before I start really digging into the stuff for the side and whatnot. That's kind of been my that's kind of been my um, my goal all along was to mechanically focus on the thing, you know, before the rest of the body cladding and whatnot. I am upset though, because the about a day or two after I had polished and waxed this car, we had a hailstorm. And amazingly enough, I mean, it was just hailing like crazy. Um, and it put marks on the hood. Um, it left a few dents, a couple of dings here and there. 
Um, it left a couple of obviously paint chips that were not there when I waxed and polished and, and all that. Um, so the hood and some of this fender here and uh, that, there's one there on the door. Um, there's another one. There's one here. We, it, the, this side, some of this side got a little bit of hail damage during the storm. And then, <laughs> and then it hailed again after that. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I was upset, deeply upset because I just got this car looking the best that I can get it to look. And then, you know, we got marks and, and small dings on the hood now from hail. And, um, I am thankful though that my Fusion and the Fiesta, um, none of those seem to have obtained any damage from that storm. Um, I don't know why it was just this in particular that got the damage end of it, uh, but I am glad that the two newer and more valuable vehicles <laughs> um, did not sustain any damage, but I am bummed out that my, my, my beautiful Aztec did. <laughs> Happy spring. <laughs> yes. It is hailing. This isn't the first day this week that it's hailed. <laughs> Ooh, it hurts. <laughs> Look at that. Oh man, yeah, we had uh, we had a really good storm a few nights ago. It was like midnight, and it hailed a lot, and it's, it's hailing now quite a bit. But the storm the other night, man, it was uh, it actually hailed so hard. Some places around here had almost golf ball size hail. In fact, um, the Aztec got some hail damage on it. The other two cars, ironically enough, did not. And I hope it stays that way. But, um, you know, I just cleaned up the Aztec, you know, about two days before that storm. And it waxed, it looks really good. And the day after the storm, there's a bunch of hail chips on the hood and some on the fenders and stuff. Ooh. So anyway, I got a hold of the guy who um, used to do the touch-up work at the dealership I used to work at. And um, he's going to mix this color for me. I'm going to give him the color code. He's gonna mix the color up for me and uh, make arrangements to get me a little bit so I can touch up all the uh, nicks on the hood and the stuff that I've been wanting to touch up too. Heck yeah, this is weird weather. I can't believe how many days it's been happening. Those are pretty decent sized pellets. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's starting to hurt. I think they're getting bigger. This is fantastic. And now the sun, <laughs> now the sun's coming out. Oh man. Do you hear that? That's pretty solid. Oh, this is unbelievable. Yeah, it's getting harder. You can't see it now, but there's there's one there, and it, you know you can't really tell because it's all wet and stuff now. But is that it? Are we done? Right there the roof one just landed on my finger I can, yeah keep it there <laughs> that's where it landed weird 
Oh man, I'm soaked. That's it? Are we done? Sun's out now? It's a beautiful day? No? Are we coming back? Sheesh. So before we go into talking about how the car has been so far, um, I figured, you know, occasionally I will make a video and tell you guys exactly what has been replaced with this thing since day one. And, you know, that way it kind of keeps you guys in the loop if you haven't followed any of the videos, uh, repair videos and whatnot. But um, I figured, you know, before we move on to the actual, I don't know, review of the car, I figured we could just go ahead and take the time and I'll read off all of the itemized lists that uh, of the things that I have replaced. And usually I'll give you guys the price. I might still give you guys the price since I have them listed here. Um, but, you know, we'll just run by it real quick. And then that way you guys will know everything that we've had to do to this thing since the day that I brought it home and where we are currently uh, nearing the 5,000 mile mark. So. Let's start off with the car itself. $400, it had 170,480 miles on the odometer, and it had that mileage up until September of last year when I started driving it. So they, I got that mileage memorized into my brain from seeing the odometer sit with that mileage the entire time it sat here in the driveway. Um, we did spend 35 or $53, rather, $53 to uh, rent the trailer and get this thing home. Uh, the Felpro head gasket kit and head bolts, $220. The rear Aztec nameplate for the glass, I had to order another one of those. It was $35. The oil cap, a positive battery post screw, the front hood shocks, the rear lift gate shocks, the power relay fuse center cover, all that was $15. A lot of junkyard runs here, you'll notice that. My first used battery for the car was $35. The six disc CD changer, the mechanism itself, I had to buy a whole new unit because the one that came with the car didn't work. It was $50. The remote key fob and the hood insulator, $10. The back engine head, $50. Had to replace one of the engine heads. As you'll see, we had to replace another engine head that was another $50. The power steering sender line, the power steering return line, the power steering cooler line, the transmission fluid sending line, and the transmission fluid return line, $221. The transmission fluid line fitting, $15. The transmission fluid line fitting with a specific chuck for the one line, another $15. The exhaust manifold, uh, the kit for the front and rear, uh, the EGR tube, the oxygen sensor, the, I should say the um, front oxygen sensor, uh, and spark plug wires, all that was $360 at the time. The exhaust crossover pipe on the engine, $99. Coolant bypass tube, $34. Thermostat bypass tube, $19. Six of the original AC Delco 41-940 spark plugs, $32. Six stainless steel nuts and six stainless steel washers for the front exhaust manifold, because it did not come with any of the kit, $3. A new air filter, $11. Six brake lines and two fittings, $51. Uh, another brake line, two inverted line unions for the brake lines, $14. Two exhaust stud kits and a spark plug anti seize, $17. The engine block coolant passage plug because I had to eliminate the engine oil cooler on this specific car. Um, pulled it out of junkyard. They didn't even charge me for it. It was literally just a fitting that big. Screws into the bottom of the engine block, toward the bottom of the block, and there you go. The oil filter adapter for the original oil filter uh, connection on the car, 25 cents from the junkyard. Two front floor mats, $3. A glove box handle, $5. My first oil change 
um, five quarts of engine oil, 5W30, one gallon of antifreeze, and 16 ounces of sea foam, $61. Crankcase breather tube, a serpentine belt, a belt pulley, a belt tensioner, the upper radiator hose, and the very hard to find engine cover 30, for the 3400. All that was $38 from the junkyard. The lower belt pulley, another used battery, the PCV to EVAP vacuum line, that was $38. The heater core hose quick connect under the hood and a hose clamp for said connect, uh, $16. A brand new fuel filter was $15. Some steel stick for the return line as a temporary fix before I actually fix the rusted out return line. And a quick connect for the fuel sending line. Both of those together were $18. The crankshaft pulley seal, which would be like the main front main seal of the engine, um, has a slight oil leak. Bought a seal for it, haven't put it in yet, uh, but it was $6. The camshaft position sensor, we replaced that for $35. Got a new PCV valve for $3. Three coil packs, which I pulled off of another 3400 V6 from the junkyard, $30. We also ended up pulling the coil pack ignition module, which was another $20. We did another oil change, uh, five quarts of oil and an AC Delco oil filter. That was $17. We had to replace the power steering return line again, the cooler part of it. Um, they call it the cooler line, but we got the original AC Delco part this time, and that was $28. We also had to replace the power steering sending line with another genuine AC Delco line because I screwed up the, f the first one. <laughs> I kinked it. So that was $33. Uh, we replaced the window, the, uh, window switch on the driver's door, the master switch, and it was $26. That did not fix my problem with the windows not working. Turned out to be the actual wiring connector going from the driver's door to into the dashboard. And I had to I ended up cutting and replacing the harness that connects the power and ground to that. Uh, they were corroded. All the windows still work just fine. Uh, had to replace the transmission filter along with obviously two gallons of transmission fluid. The filter was $17 and the, um, the gall two gallons of transmission fluid was $18. Had to replace the radiator. Uh, ordered a genuine AC Delco radiator for this thing. It was $118. Um, we also had to replace the radiator, AC condenser, and the fan screws. There were two special screws with two special nuts that connect them, obviously, to all three of the components at the front end. And those are $20 because I had to go through the dealership to get those. We bought two gently used front tires and the inside cooler tray. Uh, that trip was thirty or eighty-three dollars. Sorry. The power relay center bottom tray and the power steering line clip that keeps the lines connected to the engine block and out of the way of the serpentine belt. That trip cost me nine dollars. We ordered two new Monroe OE Spectrum front struts, and those were two hundred and forty-six dollars. The used driver side outer tie rod that I had to replace was six dollars. We ordered two new Monroe OE Spectrum shocks for the back over here, and those were $80, sorry. <laughs> Had to buy another used battery, and this is the one that has so far been lasting the longest, $35. We did another oil change before the car was put out to the road, or maybe shortly after I got it on the road, I can't remember. But uh, five quarts of oil, another oil filter, and an engine oil pressure switch what i which i have yet to put into the car it's in the glove box i have to buy the socket to actually get the old switch out but all of that together was 42 dollars. we had to buy a license plate light assembly they had some weird aftermarket one on here that didn't work at all matter of fact the wire where well, the one wire was completely corroded off in half so we went to the junker pulled the appropriate light 
from another Aztec. Put that in there. We also got a uh, the cargo cover for the back because I accidentally threw mine out. Didn't know what it was. It was $5 that whole trip there. The Aztec cargo tray, which is in the back here, the sliding tray that goes over top of the tailgate, uh, that was $25 from the junkyard and two more quarts of transmission fluid uh, just to monitor the fluid level after I had it refilled and driven it and stuff like that. I had to add a little more at one time, but I had to end up buying two more quarts just in case. $7. So that list stopped in October of 2019. That was around the time that I made the last Aztec investment video. What have we had to replace since October? Uh, we are now in this is the very last day of May. It's May 31st of 2020. So what have we had to replace since October? We had to replace the left rear hub bearing, hub assembly, as well as the left wheel brake cylinder. The hub itself was $45 and the rear cylinder for the brake here was $25. So we had to do that. That cleared up the annoying brake warning that was coming up on the dashboard and the annoying brake chime. So we got rid of that by replacing this hub and that wheel cylinder, which was leaking. That's why I replaced it. The weather stripping on this particular car when I bought it was completely coming up off of this and the top was deteriorating. You cannot get that apparently. So I had a company reseal the windshield because it was leaking from the top onto the rear view mirror and down the dashboard in specific rain conditions. And uh, I hired a company to reseal the entire windshield. They glued the old piece back on here after resealing it underneath, but the top one had shrunk from the sun so it wasn't really fitting across like it should have been. So they, you know, I told them just go ahead and get rid of it. But we do have a uh, new sealant up here across the top of the windshield. Um, that cost me $40 for them to reseal the entire windshield on the outside. And they did it on the inside as well. I had to get another six disc CD changer mechanism because the one that I had originally bought also broke. Apparently the six disc CD changers are problem prone, but I like them. <laughs> it is like the top of the line stereo unit for the Aztec. So I do want to keep mine in the car as long as I can, even if I have to keep trying to find mechanisms that work and whatnot. But I had to replace it again. And that meant I had to buy a whole nother stereo to tear one out and put it in my existing unit. That was $20. So that was another $20 that I spent on the stereo. I was able to find four of the rare leather appointed seats for the Aztec. Now my Aztec came with cloth, cloth, cloth seats and I loved the cloth seats. I loved the pattern specifically with the seats that were in here, but came, came across an Aztec with the leather seats and I really didn't want to pass that up. Uh, the seats were pretty much immaculate for the age that they are and uh, I decided to buy them. So all four seats leather appointed that cost me $160 from the junkyard that I found them at at 3,000 miles we did another oil change obviously so our oil change at 3,000 miles after driving it it was a little after 3,000 miles but whatever so the oil change um, that was $28 for the five quarts of oil and obviously the filter we replaced the blower motor resistor because the fan blower only worked on high and that was getting annoying after a while so we replaced the resistor and that was uh, $25, I believe, is what I have it marked as. So $25 for the resistor. All of the fan speeds work just fine. Uh, more recently, the front passenger side ABS wiring needs to be replaced because I do have an analog and traction code uh, trying to diagnose that. We do not have any wheel speed signal coming from the right front wheel. So when I took apart the wiring connector, we discovered that there was corrosion on the hub connector itself and on the wiring to the connector. So there was corrosion there. Uh, I went ahead to, to the junkyard and cut the wiring off of another Aztec. Didn't put it on yet, but that was $2 from that junkyard. We are obviously gonna have to replace that hub also. 
and that's why I haven't put the wiring on it yet. I'm going to wait until we get to the hub um, before I end up doing that. Um, so that was $2 for the wiring and has yet to be installed. Also more recently had to replace the mass airflow sensor. Uh, turns out whoever had the car before me had the mass airflow sensor on backwards. So I was getting a rich condition. It set a code, tried to diagnose it in the last couple of vlogs. We came to find out that the mass airflow sensor was backwards, flipped it around, put it back on, seemed to work okay for a little bit, but then it was throwing a transmission code for a P1811, which is a maximum shift and adapt um, code, something, something along the lines there. And uh, the mass airflow sensor, I believe, was throwing that code almost instantly once you started driving the car. The transmission started shifting awful. The, you can hear the transmission fluid pump screaming because it sets the transmission to a default mode where the pump is on full, like on max. And um, I found that to be very strange. Uh, so I ended up buying another mass airflow sensor from a junk from the junkyard. It was ten dollars, and I really haven't had any issues with it since then. Now, occasionally, we still get the transmission hard shifts. Uh, I've noticed, but it, it has not been happening that frequent. Um, every now and then, uh, usually after the car has been driven for like maybe close to an hour, even. Uh, you'll start to hear the pump scream and um, it'll start shifting really hard. But then you turn the car off, you let it sit for a few minutes, you start it back up and you continue on your way and it's back to normal. So I think, you know, it being a used mass airflow sensor, it's probably still not perfect, but I'm going to deal with it for now. The problem has not been existent, as existent as it was with the damaged airflow sensor that we ended up taking out of the car. So used mass airflow sensor, $10. And last but not least, so far what you will see in the next couple of clips that I have for you, we had to replace the spark plug. We didn't really have to replace it, but I replaced it anyway. And it was on the number three cylinder because we still have an occasional misfire. Um, you guys can take a look at the video. The spark plug, um, was uh what was it seven dollars the spark plug was seven dollars and then we also replaced all of the wires the spark plug wires with original ac delco wires uh, and that set was fifty dollars take a look at some of this video footage real quick all right so i really wasn't gonna vlog this um because it's getting kind of later in the evening and i really wasn't sure how this was gonna play out. But as you can see, I removed the three coil packs. I removed the ignition control module, um, taped up some wires, unplugged some wires, and I wanted to get back to our cylinder three spark plug to see what it looks like, um, compare, you know, to see if it's, it's, it's fouled up or anything. I also uh, unplugged number six up here and I removed it as well. So I got them both sitting side by side. Um, I chose six because it's actually sharing the same coil, um, you know, as uh, cylinder three. And three is our obvious random misfire at times. So here's what we got. So the one in my left hand is number three. And the one, oh, left hand, the one on the left is cylinder three. And the one on the right is cylinder six. Um, and as you can see, number three has more of this like coating on it so um it's probably pretty fouled um compared to number six number six looks pretty decent i'm guessing um the tips up there i don't know if you can see the underside of the tip um i know this is kind of bad angle it's there you can see it looks like it's kind of fouled over the one on number six looks a little yeah yeah looks a little better so I think this spark plug I think I'm probably going to have to replace it so I might go to the store and see if we can get just one AC Delco 41-940
which are the plugs that this engine calls for. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it all back together tonight. I'd like to, but I doubt it. But this is, you know, I'm not pulling all the plugs. I'm assuming the rest of them are gonna look like this. And I'm, I think that's a good looking plug. But you can just see the, almost looks like white crust and stuff on there. That's probably from all that fuel that hasn't been burning maybe from our rich condition. I don't know. Yeah, even the back side, look at the back of this. It's got a little bit of a darker color to it. And this just has this like white crust, you know. So this this spark plug probably is the cause of our random misfire is going to be my guess. All right, so we're gonna do a spark plug in it in cylinder three. I just started it up, it's still cold. So far, nothing. We'll see what happens once it starts to warm up. If uh, maybe this an injector that's causing that missing in three or not, or if it just was that spark plug from the rich condition. So I don't know why it would be that one in particular, but. I guess we'll see. It doesn't look like it's taking as much now, but we'll see what happens once it warms up. Alright, so new spark plug and cylinder 3. It's still missing. So, in trying to continue diagnosing this misfire on cylinder 3 of the Aztec, we have swapped coils in a previous video and the misfire didn't follow. So the coil for that cylinder is not the problem. Then we did a spark plug replacement, took the plug out, which really wasn't that old, but it looked questionable. It had some, uh, looks like some minor fouling on it. We replaced the spark plug with another OEM spark plug and the misfire continued. So we are down to two possibilities at this point. It is either going to be maybe a bad spark plug wire or it is going to be the number three fuel injector. And I'm really really hoping it is not the number three fuel injector because that means I have to tear this entire top half of the intake off all over again and buy an injector which aren't cheap. Um, so in today's effort to try to figure out if that was going to be the cause or not, I was going to simply remove the number three spark plug wire and remove another spark plug wire and just switch them. And then I was going to see if the spark plug or the uh, spark plug wire was going to be the issue if the misfire went from number three to another cylinder. But we didn't get that far. You know why? Because the number three spark plug wire got damaged. Came right out of the boot. Um, granted, it was kind of tough to get back there. My good pliers are at work. I had a very small, dinky pair of pliers that went somewhere all of a sudden. I don't know where they are. But anyway, so trying to pull on the boot, that plug would not come out. That, that spark plug boot. The other two in the back came out. So, ended up tugging on the wire and this is what happened. So obviously I cannot test this now because it is destroyed. I finally got the boot off and when I pulled the boot off the, um, see here's, here's the boot. When the boot came off, the metal piece the connector was actually still stuck on the spark plug so then I had to try to fish that out blindly and we did manage to get that off of the spark plug I put my phone down there took a couple pictures it didn't look like it damaged the spark plug any if it did I still have the old one worst case scenario but this one still looks good so needless to say this is a good opportunity for me to replace the spark plug wires that being said, we got the AC Delco wires, which 
these are what I should have bought to begin with because these ones that came from another retail store when I asked them for spark plug wires they gave me some whatever their cheapest wires were apparently they were extremely long I didn't like the way they looked I kind of had a bad feeling about them from the start and today has been really hot not only is it really hot but it was raining for most of the day and that's when I noticed that the Aztec was missing more than usual was when it was hot and it was very humid very humid out here so that led me to believe that maybe it could be a possible spark plug issue because maybe the moisture was messing up that wire somehow um, so needless to say that's kind of what gave me the idea to test this today and then this happened so I can't really test it so we're just gonna replace them all anyway but I wanted these originally and uh, just never got them so this is a good a time as any hopefully <clears throat> I don't know if these are you know kind of universal in a sense I don't know if they're gonna be all the same length as these messy ones here these crappy messy ones here but even if they are longer, they're AC Delco, the quality is probably going to be a lot better than whatever these were. So I'm going to work on getting those hooked up, put in place and whatnot. Hopefully that'll cause our misfire to be corrected in cylinder three. I'm really hoping it is not an injector. Really, really hoping it is not the injector, which is buried under here under all of this but if i if that's what i gotta do then that's what i gotta do right. cheapest route first this is the next step up all right so here's our new wires they still look a little long um but for some reason they don't look as bad as the other ones did the ones in the back fit a lot better and i like how the uh, caps are sitting i think these caps were were these taller? No. They didn't seem like they, they sit as well as these. You can't even really see the back wires. Some of them are be hanging out around there, but they all seem like they're, you know, actually pointing off to the back instead of the front. And then these three here. So all I really got to do is put this thing back on, but oh wait, we got everything hooked up. All of our wiring harness alternator o2 sensor back there um, all the various wires going to the ignore ignore ignition control module let's hook up the tech 2 and start it up and see if it's gonna make a difference again fingers crossed all right so like I said today it was really hot it was really muggy and it was running extremely uh, extremely bad today and it was so bad that it actually set the service engine light back on within a matter of minutes of the car running so we've got the um, we've got the code for the random uh, misfire one day I promise I'm going to unplug that so we got the random misfire this EVAP code comes up from time to time, but it doesn't request the uh, service engine light. Uh, that's the typical thing there. And the transmission code, this is coming and going, but it doesn't show up as often as it did with uh, the mass airflow sensor that we put on from the junkyard. Um, but other than that, I mean, the transmission is still good. I will talk about that, I am sure, in the vlog that you are watching. So, um, I'm going to clear all these real quick. We'll just get rid of them. Uh, hit yes. And then we will put our misfire counters on. And like I said, I really hope that this, it's a spark plug wire issue, not a fuel injector issue. So for the last time, fingers crossed, we should all be at zero because we haven't started it. All right, here we go. 
That's not good. That's not good. Time out. We forgot to hook the brake booster up. All right, so now it's probably gonna run a little funny for a second. Let's start this over. I think my exhaust is getting louder. time I saw a cylinder one had one also but I put grease on those plug wires too so I don't know if that has to be uh, broken in either but I can already tell it's running smoother just from touching the wheel ah uh. all right so we're sitting here it's been at temperature the car has been running for 13 minutes and uh, why is my light on anyway anyway uh, yeah the more it warms up the more it misses so this is what it's been doing the entire ignition cycle so I think the verdict is finally in we need a new fuel injector unfortunately so that's where we stand with the Aztec so far. Uh, as you saw in those last couple of clips that I really wasn't intending on making a vlog about, which is why I just kind of used my phone here and there. I figured I can throw them into one of these videos. But um, as you can see, we're, we're most likely going to need the number three fuel injector. And that's something that I haven't done yet. I haven't looked into it yet. Um, I know injectors are kind of pricey. And if I have to replace that one, I might as well replace all six uh, since we have to tear the entire top half of the you know engine apart almost the top half we have to tear the plenum off and um, you know there's a lot of stuff just around the area but it really shouldn't be that bad I just wish those fuel injectors were a little more accessible um, unfortunately on this engine they are buried under the plenum so we have to we got to do a lot of tearing apart <laughs> to get to them so might as well do all six so um and that's pretty much it uh other than that we have a couple of other suspension components under the car that are going to need replaced um control arm bushings are shot um we still really need to maybe get some new tie rods uh I, like i mentioned i did replace the one with a used one for the time being um this one this one i don't think is also um I can't remember if this one's original or not, but either way, I do want them to be changed out at some point. Um, I don't know. There's just other little things here and there that, that we can definitely improve upon with the vehicle, but it is still uh, actually doing fine for the first 5,000 miles that we have been driving this uh, vehicle since it's been rebuilt. And uh, I'm just overall glad that it's it's running as good as it is <laughs> to, to be quite honest with you so for the most part i haven't really had any other real drivability issues with this vehicle other than the rich condition which was corrected and now we need to get the um the fuel injector obviously to get this thing from its occasional cylinder three misfire um other than that you know before the transmission started throwing that code every now and then um this thing still drives pretty well um you know i haven't had any real transmission issues yet the transmission um does shift extremely smooth for the age and i'm was that was one of the things that i was really surprised about when i got this thing on the road was how well the transmission actually drives um it was a real shock <laughs> actually uh there's no fourth gear but we have been dealing with 
not having fourth gear. Um, I've been taking the car on the highway. I've had it up past 70 miles an hour and the engine runs a little over three grand. But I mean, other than that, it really hasn't done anything stupid uh, while I've been driving it. Um, the ride itself, you know, my other Aztec, I, I said it, I always said that it felt like you were riding on a cloud when you were in the car. But, um, you know, this one, it being older and a lot of the bushings and stuff, uh, you know, like I said, the control arm bushings are shot and whatnot. You know, you still, you, <laughs> it, it's a little more jittery, obviously, in some cases. The new shocks make it glide quite well but as far as you know initial bumps and stuff you do feel a little bit more of those and that's just something that you know I can deal with but it's definitely not a bad ride compared to a lot of other old cars and stuff and like I said I definitely think the new shocks and whatnot have uh have definitely helped it um since I've been having it on the road you know I've definitely been using it here and there to haul things in um you know i've i was hauling furniture in it one day i you know we had a bookshelf that we brought to the house um just this past memorial day weekend we were loading up stones and bags of rocks and light fixtures and such because we decided to finally do the front and back of our house so this thing has had heavy loads on it and i think um you know even with its occasional miss, it doesn't seem to miss when it's under a load and you're actually, you know, accelerating and giving it power and stuff and holding it at a consistent speed. The miss is usually at idle, but it did really well, you know, handling all of these loads and, um, you know, transmission acted fine the entire time. It's just, I'm just really surprised, you know, at, you know, what I've been able to do with this thing since it's been on the road. And, I guess that's pretty much what I have to say about it. Um, there's really not much else I can say. There's still cleaning I got to do back here because I do have uh, bits of dirt and stuff from all the rocks and stuff that we brought home. And, you know, there's still, yeah, it just needs a good vacuuming at this point. <laughs> but um, I'm still happy with it. And my goal is to obviously continue to keep this car for as long as I can, um, I'm going to be extremely sad the day that I have to give it up. And I'm hoping that I, I won't have to do anything like that for a very long time. Because uh, I am still very glad that I made this purchase. And, you know, this car, as I mentioned in another vlog, is what kind of got me into going to school to be an auto technician. You know, doing all the hands-on stuff and all of the learning for the first time on my, my very first project. Um, you know, that's, it's, this is kind of what is getting me into what I want to do for the rest of my life. So, um, I have no regrets on buying this thing. Um, it's definitely been a frustrating challenge at times, but the overall result actually having it on the road and driving it, uh, you know, every day and whatnot, I'm still very, very glad that I did what I did with this car and that's pretty much all that I have to say um you know at the time like I said we are just a little under the 5,000 mile mark and I'm sure within you know the upcoming days I will have it at the 5,000 mark we're going to do an oil change on it again uh in about another thousand it's it's just about due and I don't know other than that we got the hub the ABS wire uh, obviously, again, the fuel injector, which I'm not sure when that's going to take place, but that will be hopefully soon-ish. And it'll definitely probably be before the end of summer we'll do that. That's it. That's really all i got to say about it. I also want to thank everybody who has been following all of the videos and all of the progress with this particular Aztec. I know a lot of people don't necessarily look for videos on Aztec projects and whatnot because, well, nobody really cares about these cars like I do. But I know that there are a small group of us out there who enjoy these vehicles. And, uh, you know, I want to thank all you guys for watching all these videos and the progress that we've made with the vehicle so far. Um, and everybody else who hasn't even really specifically liked this car, but have watched all of the videos and whatnot. You know, 
thank you very much. We're gonna continue to do what we can with this beast for, like I said, as long as I have it. And that's pretty much all that I gotta say about this at 5,000 miles. I love it, and like I said, I'm gonna drive it until the wheels fall off. Hopefully not literally, but you know. So if you enjoyed this vlog, and if you've enjoyed all the other vlogs, and if you're excited to see more content about the 01 Aztec GT, give this video a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and also check out teespring.com slash doors slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That's all that I've got for today. So I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care.